Good evening, everyone. Um, as some of you might not know, I'm also, uh, you know, as social Steve, I am uh, invested in social media and uh, part of my uh, side uh, employment and, and hobby has been contributing to a wonderful, wonderful local real estate agent uh, in the GTA. Uh, I've had the privilege of knowing uh, this agent for a uh, broker now uh, for probably well over 15 years. Um, and uh, tonight we're going to talk about a very important topic. Uh, obviously, we're in the middle of a pandemic, uh, COVID-19, it's upon us. We are in quarantine, we are uh, away from our family, our friends, um, our economy, our business, uh, everything has changed the way we know it. And um, not uncommon and, and not uh, unimpacted the real estate industry and the, the real estate market has been impacted uh, greatly. But it's not all bad news. And um, part of what we're, we're going to discuss tonight with uh, Miss Lena Friedman is uh, how real estate is moving forward and adjusting to the times and adapting to uh, the changing times and the changing markets and the landscape in COVID-19. So uh, with that, I wanted to give a brief introduction. Uh, Lena Friedman, who you see with me this evening, is a uh, business savvy market, uh, the market in York region is second to none. Her innovative marketing skills, expert negotiation skills, and the close attention she pays for her clients' needs makes her one of the premier real estate agents in the GTA. Couple that in with like over a decade of marketing and real estate and everything. I mean, um, leading an extensive marketing team, Lena and team, uh, we sell Richmond Hill, uh, really is the uh, second to none choice for the market. Having spent most of her career working in the area of York Region, uh, primarily Richmond Hill, Lena has an in-depth appreciation and awareness for the market of York Region and surrounding areas. She is able to provide advice and guidance on any and all of her clients' needs, concerns raise, ranging from economic conditions right now, uh, market fluctuation, uh, how long your home should spend on the market, and uh, what asking prices should be. Uh, Lena has this knowledge, she has this expertise, and uh, she's going to share some of that with us tonight. So Lena, thank you so much for joining us. Um, so uh, with that, I mean, let's dive right in. Uh, over the last week, we've, we've been promoting this Instagram Live and we've had some questions submitted uh, from some of our followers on our social media channels. Uh, there is a lot of concern. There is a lot of um, anxiety in, in the real estate industry. Um, and, you know, it's not uncommon for people to feel anxious right now uh, in all aspects of life, but certainly when it comes to real estate transactions. So um, yeah, why don't you give us a little bit of a uh, introductory into, you know, where we stand right now and, and where the market is at. Of course, absolutely. So first off, I would like to thank you for that wonderful introduction. Uh, thank you very much. I'm really happy to be here. Thanks to everyone that's joining. Um, I think, uh, you know, like you said, we are living in very unprecedented times. Uh, a lot of what we know and uh, has been normal to us has changed and uh, we've had to learn how to adapt very quickly and of course one of the things that we've had to adapt was the real estate market um, so absolutely so I'd like to start off by just saying that Alina and team and we sell Richmond Hill our utmost priority has always been and even more so now is the health and safety of our clients so we are doing absolutely everything according to protocols we are constantly monitoring uh, provincial and federal uh, recommendations and everything uh, to make sure that our clients are well taken care of again we've always done that but now in these times it's even more important so uh, I think you know having said that the need for real estate has not changed Obviously, uh, the way that we look at things, the way that we've had to do things has dramatically shifted, and that's because of the times we are living in. But at the end of the day, you are still looking at a market where people need to sell their homes and people need to buy homes. Shelter is one of the most important things that we, we have, the roof over our head for our children, our families. So it is still something that's moving along. Um, obviously, it's changed uh, quite dramatically, but we are... Uh, constantly working as a team, excuse me, to make sure that uh, everything is being done as safely as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and uh, you know, you, you bring up a good point that 
uh, safety pr protocols, uh, you know, procedures around open houses and showings and things. These were always things paramount. And oh, Lena, if you could just lift your camera up just a little bit. Um, well, there we go. <laughs> um, the uh, those protocols have always been something that you've been so uh, strict with and and have always adhered very strongly to. And um, yeah, it's it's been admirable the the complete. I mean, nobody was prepared for a full pandemic and and a, a full economy shutdown. So uh, you know, through your leadership with the team and um, you know making sure that that business was adapted so that we could still move forward and and our clients could still be served. Um, so why don't we dive right into some of the questions because I know that uh, we had we had some questions submitted and and there's answers that uh, people are looking for. Um, one of the questions here we got was, I need to sell my home, and how do I do it in the middle of a pandemic, COVID-19? Uh, what, what precautions? I know you just spoke on, on some of those, but what are some of the specific precautions you and the brokerage are taking to keep uh, things safe during these times? Absolutely. That's a great question. Uh, you know, typically we look at the spring market and this would be the time that it would be ramping up and it would be super busy. There'd be lots more inventory, lots of buyers. So obviously we are looking at a quieter market right now and where that will go, you know, that will only be determined in the next few months. So we'll see. But at the end of the day, there are still a number of people that do need to sell their homes. Right. Uh, there could be people that have already, uh, purchase something there could be people whose new construction builds will be actually finished um right there could be people in multiple situations where they need to do stuff so at this point what we do is uh we and that they have, um, you know, a lot of the decision-making power and the communication lines are always open. Now, of course, in these times, you really have to respect uh, what they are comfortable with. Mm -hmm. So there are certain sellers that are totally okay with people coming through as you prepare the house, as long as everybody is very safe. So, you know, we've had uh, in the last uh, few weeks, we've had listings and we've had deals. So I can actually speak from experience in the trenches, uh, so right. to speak. And uh, yeah, so we've had uh, sellers that have said, you know what, we are okay with you coming in and preparing as long as everybody takes precautions. Mm -hmm. The precautions, obviously, you sanitize you uh, minimize the amount of touching in the home. Uh, you know, you do things like uh, wear gloves, wear masks and all of that, just to make sure you keep your distance. You know, we still want to practice social distancing no matter what. Um, if you can avoid uh, being in each other's company or at least keeping the proper distance, that would essentially be ideal. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, that's there's a group of sellers like that. There is another group that would prefer, you know, perhaps to have less of that contact, mm -hmm. right? This is where technology really comes into play. Mm -hmm. Now, we have always at the team have focused on technological advances, and we always try to be um, as up to date as possible. So here, this is where it's really come in handy. And of course, with you as well, Steve, you've been a, a tremendous help with all of this. Okay. Uh, you know, things like things like our virtual tours that we've always done, uh, things like 360 panoramic videos that we do. So essentially, this is something we were doing. And it's become so important because buyers can actually get a sense of the home or the condo, whatever it is that we're selling, they can get a sense of it before even going in. Right. Right. So that's been a really big help. Uh, things like YouTube videos. So we're really utilizing technology to the best of the ability. Now, the other thing is too, you know, if a client, let's say, doesn't want someone coming in and doing a virtual tour and doing any of those uh, preparatory things, no problem. We are willing to work with that. Right. Mm -hmm. Almost pretty much everybody has a smartphone. The sellers uh, typically will take some videos themselves. They'll take some photos or they'll some bits some photos. And we work with that as well. We do have the technology to do that. Is it ideal? Perhaps not. But you know what? It still gives the buyer a really good idea of what these houses look like. So we are making it work that way. Um, in terms of precautions, of course, you know, our brokerage, uh, Remax Realtron, they are wonderful. They've been so quick to respond. They've given such an amazing amount of support to us uh, realtors and also to our clients. So I'm really grateful for the support that we get from them. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the things that they did is, you know, they came up with something like showing affirmations where these are things that we post on each MLS listing where it's a questionnaire essentially that uh, realtors would have to download. They have to answer it. So it would say, have you been out of the country in the last 14 days? Have the COVID-19
symptoms, perhaps. Um, so things like that, right? And, and that's another way that we're monitoring things and making sure that we are protecting our clients, because that is, of course, the most important thing that we can do. Once they get into uh, showings, then what we do, obviously, is uh, we do ask them to limit the amount of, excuse me, people in the house to two. Uh, we do ask them to wear masks, gloves, and all of that. Uh, we try to really minimize the amount of uh, any contact that there would be between the potential buyers, realtors, and the sellers as well. So these are all things that we're doing. And of course, as I said, if anything were to change provincially or federally, that we are very in tune with that. And what we're doing is we're making sure that we're staying on top of it. So anything new that would come top down, we would be aware of it. And we would, of course, put that in place as well. Wow. Yeah. I mean, very uh, I'm thorough response, but, um, you know, certainly working with you in, in uh, course, uh, close correlation, I, I'm aware of the constant changes and the constant evolution of, um, you know, protocols and procedures. Um, uh, I did not know that um, uh, Remax, Realtron, uh, the brokerage has uh, instituted, you know, the, the questionnaires for agents. That's, um, you know, something that is kind of being seen as a standard pandemic um, tool right now, uh, if you will, for contractors, but most people don't know that that applies to real estate agents as well. Um, and and as, as someone who owns real estate myself and uh, certainly was represented by, by you during my transaction, um, it, it's, it's comforting to know that, you know, just because we're in a pandemic and just because, uh, you know, our economy is largely slowed down or, or, or stopped right now, uh, real estate does not have to stop. There's no rule. Um, you know, real estate has been deemed essential. Uh, and um, real estate agents are allowed to continue conducting business. And, and with these precautions, I think um, it's more than suitable to do so. Um, let's let's go on to the next question here. So uh, on the reverse of selling the house, I, I've sold my home or, or this this person has asked that they've sold their home and now they're on the market to buy another home. Is that even possible? Is there even homes on the market? Um, you know, what's what's the status of the market right now? Of course, and I think it ties into the earlier points because obviously, you know, there's give and take on both ends. So uh, it is definitely possible. There is still inventory. Are we looking at regular spring market uh, inventory levels? Absolutely not. We're not, and we probably won't be looking at that this year. Uh, but you know what, there are still homes on the market because as I mentioned, there are people on the other end that do need to sell for whatever reason, right? Uh, so there is definitely a supply of inventory out there. And uh, the way we would do it with buyers as well is we would do pretty much the same um, as what we do for the sellers in terms of, of course, we pay attention to things like um, each brokerage's protocol, you know, if they have something like Remax does in, in terms of questionnaires or anything like that, um, giving uh, obviously the listing agent a call as well, just to see if there's any certain precautions to take. Uh, that's personally what I've been doing as well. I've been contacting every single realtor if I am showing for buyers or people for leases and seeing if we are able to show it and you know what, what their certain restrictions may be and stuff. So I think that communication is extremely important in times like these. So that's, uh, you know, that's what we've been doing. And of course, again, it's the safety. So if we are, a buying realtor, if we are helping people purchase a house right now, we are not going to be going in the same car with them. I love my clients, but I think at this time, we definitely want to keep that separation. So if we are doing physical showings, uh, which, you know, are still allowed, uh, we are definitely keeping that space. We are social distancing. I am bringing sanitizer. Everybody's sanitizing their hands before they come in. We're, you know, wearing gloves and we're changing them, masks and all of that. So all of those precautions are there. Um, and the nice thing, too, with a lot of the listing realtors or the sellers is that they will do things like leaving all the lights on so you don't have to touch anything. They will leave all the doors open for you, which is great because that really minimizes any sort of dangerous exposure to people. Uh, right. So, again, that that would be applicable to anyone that's physically allowing to show. On the other end, um, there are people that perhaps are not allowing showings. So we've got a client that would prefer not to have showings until she knows that someone's very serious. So uh, what we've been doing is just liaising with all of the realtors that are um, 
wanting to show it and just gauging really doing that interaction of before seeing how serious their client is and believe me if someone's really looking right now they're definitely serious they mm -hmm. definitely need to buy but uh, you know really getting to the bottom of it what they're looking for what kind of closings uh, you know where their financing is at right so really getting a lot of information doing the video tours um you know asking sellers we've got such wonderful tools available to us now right like we can do zoom meetings we can do whatsapp calls we can do yeah. skype conferences there's so many wonderful things uh you know we're all using it for family we're using it for business so i think it's really great that we have those tools um you know everyone from from 97 to 7 is pretty much on that right yeah. now so <laughs> i think utilizing all those tools as well um some sellers are saying you know what if the buyer is really serious and if they like what they see on video then i will allow them in the house if they're serious enough to bring an offer as well right so those are all things that we can do uh the offer would of course be conditional upon them seeing the property and if there's something that they do not like that's fine they are not obligated to purchase it we would all be signing the proper paperwork so they would not be going ahead with the purchase so there's a number of different things that we've done to adapt because we've had to so it is definitely still possible again is it the most ideal situation no but i think this is going to teach us um and also kind of force us uh to to use tools that we perhaps really change really dramatic way going for hopefully mm -hmm. yeah and you know i i think um you hit it right on the head there is that this isn't just about uh, temporary measures or temporary precautions uh, you know, because we're in a pandemic or, you know, we, we need to flatten the curve or prevent the spread. Um, I really do. I, I do think that, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're on the mark with saying that this is actually re going to reinvent the real estate industry. And it's going to reinvent uh, how it's going to reinvent many business industries and, and, and many business lines it already has. Um, but a lot of these these changes and, and reinventions in, in real estate, I don't think are going to be completely detrimental. I, I think it's going to allow more opportunity for both buyers and sellers uh, to get the information, uh, whether it's electronically or digitally, or, you know, build a stronger rapport and relationship with your with your agent and or your broker. Um, you know, that's one thing that has always resonated with with me and, and the We Sell Richmond Hill team and, and Lena and team, your your dedication and, and um, you know, mantra of not just having a client, it's, it's, it's a relationship, it's a, uh, it's a business relationship. And I know that you have returning clients and, you know, uh, you have, we, our team has past clients that have stayed in touch and invited us to community events and things like this. So it's, it's been more than just um, a transactional relationship. And I, I think that that um, piece particularly for our team is is so important in these times because you're really putting all your trust in uh you know you as as an agent or or our team as um you know the the team behind uh Lena and team to make sure that a home is marketed properly it's it's showing its best uh foot forward digitally uh in a time when it may not always be possible to see it in person so i think that the, that's awesome um one side to that and this kind of applies to me as a condo owner um we know that condos are uh crowded places they they have a lot of people stacked on top of each other uh often many buildings side by side um what is is anything changing in terms of uh buying and selling condos and um you know certainly protocols because you know we know that condos are operated by condo corporations and boards uh, those boards can enact rules in the buildings. Um, obviously, certainly not prevent real estate from taking place. That's that's uh, not acceptable and uh, nor legal. But um, you know, certainly rules around this physical distancing and and sanitization and entering the building and and such. Um, have you come across any sort of unique circumstances in terms of uh, condo real estate right now? So that's actually a fantastic question because it is a little bit of a different animal uh, than freehold, like you said, right? So uh, we have, we actually listed a condo in the middle of all of this, um, a young and Eglinton, beautiful unit. And of course we used all of those tools. Um, as we said, you know, we use the, the video and the 360 and everything and uh, e-signatures. That's another really great tool that obviously uh, 
takes away the need to physically meet. So all of those things were used. Um, w- in terms of the condos, what I'm finding is, of course, it is uh, paramount to keep everybody safe. You are dealing with elevators. You are dealing with uh, crowded places, as you said. So uh, pretty much every condo that I've come across has had their amenities shut down. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know what, if you don't take pictures of the amenities right now, I think people can understand if it's a fairly new building, you can also find a lot of pictures online from renderings and stuff like that. You can always ask if you can use those uh, to the builders or or whatever the case may be. So that's kind of how we go um, about that aspect of things. Now, in terms of showings, again, it is up to the owner uh, but we do have to make sure that we clear everything with condo management so if there's concierge or it could perhaps just be the actual management company that is taking care of it so what we've been doing is we've been liaising and speaking to them making sure we're following all of the protocols Uh, as of right now other than um, not allowing the amenities to be used and all of that I haven't really come across anyone that has had absolutely no showings allowed that could be coming depending on where we end up in this pandemic um hopefully not but again uh, that's one of the things that is really paramount because you don't want to be going against the rules you don't want to have any issues for your clients on either side nor for yourself because obviously there's things like fines and everything right now uh being issued by the government so yeah that that's where i would say if you are looking to sell a condo obviously first place we start would be with management and then we put everything else into place Um, and again we even if you are not comfortable we don't even have to be meeting face to face we could do everything uh, remotely and virtually and then we would figure out uh, the comfort level of the client um, and see how they want to proceed with showings and stuff like that so um, you know this kind of touches on one of your your previous answers but really in this time uh, a seller um, whether it's whether it's our client or or it's a another agent seller, that seller really has full control over their comfort level in terms of uh, showings and and uh, certainly open houses are are uh, on hiatus, but uh, showings and and in person uh, visits, the the seller has that full control, correct? Absolutely. You know what? It's really in the hands of the buyer and the seller both. We are here to facilitate and make sure our clients are taken care of and safe. Um, uh, In addition to listening to obviously directives from the government, because that would be first and foremost, we all have to follow the rules. But absolutely. And I'm glad that you mentioned open houses. So yes, they have been banned. um, And people stopped doing them pretty much when everything went to emergency. But another really fantastic tool that we have, we can do live stream virtually virtual open houses. So uh, what uh, our board has done, they've put together on realtor.ca, they put together a tool where we can actually physically go into the house, we can schedule the time that we're there, and we can live stream it, we can answer questions kind of like what we're doing right now. So that's been really fantastic as well. I think it's such an amazing tool. Again, that's up to the seller. But typically, our clients are okay with us going in as long as we're taking the necessary precautions, and we're all keeping our safe distance from one another. So yeah, it is definitely in control of them. And we sit down. And again, this is something we've always done. But more paramount right right now is that we sit down and we make sure that our clients are taken care of and their needs are met. So whatever they are comfortable with is what we're going to go along with. And and I would imagine and this is kind of just like a a side question of my own. um, You know, we, we spoke a lot about the relationships with clients and you know, the relationships with uh, our clients and, and prospective clients. But I would imagine that in a time like this, um, there's stronger relationships or working relationships forming between uh, agent to agent because, you know, um, agents are having to uh, correspond with each other much more frequently. Not that they, you know, they corresponded frequently in the past, but uh, now there's, there's more of a um, cohesive working relationship because that, you know, we're kind of all forced to be apart. And it's really reliant on on those licensed agents and their expertise to, you know, find the common ground and get the clients what they they aspire and what they deserve to to achieve. And um, yeah, I, I just I, I really think a, a thought that's come to, to mind a few times, and you, you mentioned this earlier in the live is like, um, it's it's reinventing how we're going to look at things. And so, you know, what it, it, there's this saying going around that everybody can't wait to get back to normal. Um, 
but it's particularly for us and particularly in the real estate industry, um, these changes that we're adapting to uh, aren't going to be terrible if they are part of our new normal, which, you know, uh, I would agree with you to say that some of these um, uh, pieces like digital conferencing and stuff uh, have been proven to be beneficial. And, and certainly, um, you know, our clients that are, are served by you and, and our team are benefiting from, from all of that. Um, I do want to, uh, we're nearing the end of our live already. I don't know how we, uh, we talked, we spoke for 30 minutes and, and answered all of these questions. And uh, I'm sure we have more questions to answer. Uh, this won't be our last uh, live conversation. Um, you know, certainly during these times, I think it's important that um, we get the industry expertise and, and the latest updates from, you know, from someone like you. I, I uh, obviously work with you and, and uh, you know, report to you. Um, so I find out these, these um, changing uh, things, but I think it's, it's important that we share these with, with the community and, and um, you know, certainly our clients, past clients, future prospective clients. Uh, lastly, I'll just leave with, um, for anybody on this live or anybody who's tuning in after this is not live and we, we share the video, uh, if you do want to get in touch with uh, Lena and team, uh, you can find us on uh, Facebook, We Sell Richmond Hill uh, by Lena and team, uh, or just search at We Sell Our Hill. Uh, also, uh, Lena is many places. Her face is, exists in many places. You can find also Real Estate by Lena uh, on Facebook. Both of those are also on Twitter. And then, of course, uh, you're joining us here on Instagram Live uh, at We Sell Our Hill. Uh, please do connect with us uh, anytime you have any questions. Uh, Lena, you know, as we've said many times, uh, leads our extensive team. Uh, you have direct access to ask your questions uh, to Lena or any of the uh, team members and um, yeah, we look forward to uh, serving the needs and real estate needs through this pandemic, but and beyond. I mean, we will get through it and we will get through it together. Um, it's just a matter of time and when, and uh, I think with uh, Lena's expertise and, and, you know, certainly leading us through these times and of course, Remax Realtron Realty uh, Inc. And, and the support that they're giving as well uh, will, will help us continue serving our clients. Uh, did you have anything else, uh, Ms. Freeman, that you'd like to say before we wrap up? <laughs> Absolutely, definitely. So, uh, of course, I want to thank you so much for facilitating everything. Uh, I want to thank everyone that's tuned in. Any questions, as Stephen said, we're always here to help. We are more than happy, even if it's just a question. You don't have to be buying. You don't have to be selling. You can just call us about anything. Uh, we're happy to help with anything that's real estate related. Not an issue whatsoever. Would be happy to do that. Now, the other thing that I just want to very quickly touch upon is I want to say how amazing I think it's been to see people come together in this. Because as you said, we are apart, but we are together. I think us working together on this is going to make us better as a human race. It's going to make us better business people, better family members, better friends. So as, as difficult as it is right now, and there are lives being lost, and, you know, of course, it's, it's, it is a tragic circumstance that we're living through. But at the end of the day, I think it, we will be better for this. And in terms of the real estate world, it tends to be a little bit archaic. I think only recently people have been turning to things like technology. So I definitely think that there will come a point where um, things like we're doing right now because we're forced to you know we're forced to do a zoom meeting we're forced to do live we're forced to do whatsapp but these are things that are going to become the norm so i'm the first one to always be a little bit old school i love the face-to-face -face interaction mm -hmm. but for the time being and maybe even going forward i think the face-to-face -face interaction would be something like a whatsapp call or a zoom meeting uh, or a skype uh, conference as i said before right so i think that's great uh, you know our clients knowing that they can still see us they can see our facial expressions they, they know that there's a person it's not just a faceless conversation through text so we are always here uh you know and even if it's just something hey just reaching out just making sure you guys are okay and that's what we're doing as well so i think it's been amazing the way that the human race is coming together it's been wonderful to see i hope to see more of that i certainly hope that we do 
this we do get through this and we are stronger and that this ends but i do think we need to look at the lessons learned from this in many different aspects in you know not just in our uh humanity in our lives but also in things like real estate and how we can do business better and smarter and how we can serve our clients better so definitely um you know just to touch upon that but thank you so much to everyone for joining it's been wonderful any questions as i said we are here uh and uh, can't wait to do the next one thank you so much and have a wonderful evening everyone thanks lena bye bye, bye.